Welcome to Alpha Talks. This lady is the winner of the Champion of Champions title of BBC Mastermind India. No small feat. She has been seen as an expert on the Kaun Banega Karodpati show many many times. Other than this, she has authored books, some widely acclaimed history books for children, then women in Indian history, amongst many many others. She has been a be- member on the board of many organizations and has helmed Fikki Flow in India as its national head. And this list goes on and on. May I introduce to you Archana Gupta Guraria. Welcome to the show Archana and thank you so much for doing this. Shall we begin? Yeah, it's my privilege to be here Malini. I'm uh, glad to uh, speak to your Rotary fellows. Yes. Okay so what motivated you to take up quizzing See quizzing was essentially a byproduct of what I was you know I was very fond of reading and we always had a lot of books in the house and, you know, I was interested in culture in movies in theater music whatever so over time you find that you know you do get to know a lot of things and then in school i started being part of school teams and it's something that then really appealed to me so college was a time you know delhi university we had to study but not that much so we had you know huge amounts of free time and i used a lot of it to quiz very intensively in college and then it basically became a part of my life i think not a lot of people used to quiz in college but they don't continue quizzing so i right. somehow continued for uh, you know 10 15 years after that and even now i do you know besides being part of the quiz universe with kbc or other shows like that we, uh, we do do uh, i do a lot of informal quizzing i went for the you know european quizzing championship or i take part in a nation quizzing league so we do that informally and it's uh, it's an important part of my life absolutely that's just amazing and uh, why did you think of writing history books for children so history has always always been a passion for me and in school i think i still remember somebody asking me in class 6 what's your favorite subject and i said history but basically in 10th after 10th you took science all the good students would take science and then i studied economics and then i studied management at i am but underlying this i was reading a lot of books non fiction books on history a lot of historical fiction and then a lot of our travel used to be if we traveled we would go to the historical parts in that city we would make sure we visited the museums and all of that so uh, history was always a very intense part of my life and uh, uh, i wanted to write books for in uh, uh, i wanted to write history books and uh, especially for children because i find that i always love telling stories to children and especially out of uh, you know real life which is history so this was an opportunity to uh, this was an opportunity to put down that storytelling to youth uh, something happened you know i'd gone for an i am 25th reunion and i remember a bunch of us were sitting on the steps and i was just telling them about the origin of the indian calendar or interesting things like you know about various things and then one of my batchmates asked arshna this is wonderful but you know how are you using this to create a legacy and i said i hadn't even oh, thought about it i'm just doing this because yeah. and that also got me thinking ki let me see if i can do what i'm doing informally all the time can i put it to some good use and i was lucky i contacted the publishers they were uh, open to doing this history of india for children which is a comprehensive history which uh, uh, i wrote with my i asked my youngest sister to be part of it because she's a wonderful writer so oh, nice. you know and she has yeah. she really has a gift with words so i said let's do this together and uh, uh, so that book is indian history but in the form of a lot of stories anecdotes and uh, uh, things like that and as a quizzer lot of what you call you know i call myself a picker up of unconsidered trifles <laughs> is from 
I think Hamlet. So little, little, little things, little, little interesting unknown stories. They are peppered all over the book, and then after that, I, I think I've written women on women rulers because again, that's uh, something that it has been a part of my life. And then we we've just started writing a time travel series for children. These four children in more, from modern day India, who from modern day Goa, who keep going back to uh, various points in Indian history. There's a quest and all of that. The idea behind that is children find it so much easier to read stories and novels and fiction rather than nonfiction. So this way, they just imbibe the history and the culture. You know, the first one, Tendrugup Maurya, they go back to the time of Porus and Alexander and Takshila of those days. So then they can learn these things, you know, without really having to learn them. And that is a big part True. of what my mission is, so to say, that you learn organically and having fun think, all the way. I think it's really good because I really find that sometimes the history books can be quite dry and becomes too heavy yes. for the kids. So this is really, really a very, very important uh, area that you're covering. And uh, great. I mean, I'm looking forward to reading them myself. Okay, so you have had a varied repertoire. For example, you've been a writer, you've done quizzing, you've been involved with various institutions, even heading Flo as its national president. So how do you balance all these various activities as well as home? I mean, that being one of them, but all of them, I mean, it's pretty much of a juggle. Well, and work. My eight hours a day are spent on my business. So if all Correct. these other activities are outside that eight hours. <laughs> so Amazing. Yes, exactly. That's another, that's a huge part of your life. Absolutely. So, uh, um, yeah, I think... I grew up in a household where I saw my father who would work his whatever, he would go to office, he was serious about his business, all of that. But he'd come home at six o'clock and then he would go out to see a show or, you know, we would have film festival tickets. If we ever traveled on business, because initially I used to work with him, if we went to any new city, if we'd go to Egypt, he'd have two days, he'd keep a third day and sort of get a guide, a private guide and go and see the places. So I grew up with seeing that it's all right to, you know, indulge your this business is not the be all and end all of life. So that is something which I grew up seeing. So that is also, and I had, I had a mother who was not, um, so much into roles for women she let us be so if we came back from school then besides our studies which was up to us we were free to do what we liked with our time there was nothing that you're a girl you should learn this okay we had some music classes dance classes whatever but beyond that there was no uh, role expectation from us well, that's amazing. That, nice to know. That is something which allowed us, people used to ask me in those days. Now, of course, it's not so much the case, but why are there so few women quizzers, they would ask. Because very often mm -hmm. in a quiz, I'd be the only girl on the stage uh, growing up. Yeah. And I said, to be a quizzer, you have to spend many hours a day doing things, watching TV, reading books, which can be of no conceivable use to you in the you sense, you know, it's not going to yeah. contribute to your course. So normally what happens is that for men, their free time is their own. They can do what they want with their free time so long as they, for women, their free time belongs to their family. True. And especially after they're married or they have children. So to Absolutely. create, in our house, I had that freedom where I did not have any expectations and my free time was my own. That's amazing. That's exactly what I was asking you. know, It's so difficult to maintain that. allowed life. me to... I think I've carried that spirit through. So... Uh, you have. Besides, besides that, uh, my work, which I have, which I do, which is sort of sacred. You know, the 
whatever our ethic is, the way we are brought up, work and work time is sacred. But beyond that, I read, I quiz if I can, I travel, I, uh, I um, write. Writing and reading has been a passion that has come out of it. And this is an opportunity. And Flow Year was, I've been part of Flow since 1988. My mother was also Flow president. And uh, so Flow Years, I can just say that basically one and a half years, I didn't do anything else. So the imagine. other way is that once when sometimes some responsible, some part of your aspect overshadows the others, the others, you know, are dialed down. At other point, you can balance it. So sometimes you drop things. So True. It, it's never it's, easy. Exactly. It isn't. It isn't. It's just you have to keep prioritizing at every stage. Great. So I've heard you speak on women's empowerment with reference to women in Indian history. That was really very interesting. Could you throw some light on that for our listeners? So I think that, you know, as I said, I'm fond of history. I'm fond of stories. So I'm fond of the stories of these women from that uh, perspective. But uh, I think uh, for women, a lot of what we achieve or don't achieve has to also do with whether we perceive ourselves capable of achieving things. In which case, stories about women who have overcome odds and succeeded can really help uh, motivate people and can really help remove some mental barriers. So part of this Women Rulers, I'd actually started writing it as a column for a magazine. Initially, short, you know, two, three thousand word stories, biographies of women rulers. And then my pub a publisher asked me, can we do a book? And I looked at it. And I thought, let me, uh, so we decided to do 20. And I sat down to make an initial checklist of women rulers who can be considered, you know, who do we include, who do we not? I think the first checklist I made had about 100 women rulers. Oh, my God. <laughs> so does anybody know there were 100 women rulers? I think not. No. You know, even I no. didn't know. No. Of course, India is not one country. It's a continent and you're talking about 2000 years of history. So, you know, a small ruler is also a ruler. But still, in absolutely, a, it was just amazing to me. And then I picked out 20 based on, you know, all regions, all religions over a period of time. And we should have enough facts available about them. One person I had to drop was Prabhavati Gupta, who was the daughter of Chandrabhu Vikramaditya, who ruled the Vakatak uh, Empire, which would have included modern-day Bombay, for example, mm -hmm. Maharashtra and parts of Andhra and Karnataka. Uh, but, you know, we just had, a, she ruled for 20 years after her husband's death till her son took over. So that's mm -hmm. a, somebody in the 5th, 6th century. This was the 5th century early 5th century. This is the time roughly Ajanta Elora and all which was under her time. Who knows? Who knows about her? Really nobody. But then I didn't have enough facts to really write about her. I could just write five lines but you can't so now I can do a fiction story on her. I can you know take right. those kids back to her time. But I cannot do a non-fiction biography because there's simply not enough information. Information. So this thing, this book that I've written, Women Rulers, and I like to talk about it. And after that, as a management person, I did an analysis. And what I, you know, what is it? What are the factors that were common to these women? What helped them, you know, what are the strategies they used to become powerful or to get the throne? What are the strategies they use to stay on the throne after words because they would face more resistance from different quarters and so it was a, that itself was a very enlightening analysis. I did that after writing the stories. It was a very mm -hmm. enlightening analysis because you realize that so many of those things are still relevant today. Absolutely. I just share a couple like you know one is mm -hmm. that all of them had boys' educations more or less in those times, due to whatever reason, maybe their father, you know, uh, 
for maybe their parents did it somebody like rani of jhansi her father was a tutor to the princess and she just hang out with him so she, the second thing is they all had champions in their house somebody their husband father father in law somebody was their champion and got them forward so these are lessons for us today also that if you want the women to get ahead you know you have, to have the support system yeah you need to have the support system and the education the, that will help much more than just talking about it <laughs> so correct absolutely absolutely so really interesting so is there has there been any inspiration for you is there been somebody you have as a role model so as i said i mean it's very difficult we all look you know learn so many things from so many people in a very cliched way i have to say it's my parents <laughs> no absolutely so it's true it's like i said my mother why she got married young and she didn't study very much but was a very independent uh, minded person very fair and just very caring should care for a large number of people but um, she had tremendous confidence in the sense of she believed anybody can do anything they set out to they just have to apply themselves so she would never get awed by people and she, that is something which i don't know we we i don't think we've imbibed it to that extent as she had it but still you you know you would never think how am i going to be in that situation or you know i'm not good enough for this there was always a thing that you can always try and see where it goes there's nothing prima facie that you know you're not as the second thing as i said she had no role expectations which also came out of this my father was a very is a very well read person and he um, is interested in many 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 things so in our house we always had thousands of books not hundreds but thousands of books that's a kind of house mm-hmm. one grew up in and uh, we would you know classical music theater we learned you know anything and as i said a lot of travel a lot of history so those things definitely contribute to you know we get a yeah. place to start from they Absolutely. had to start from scratch my you know if you see traditional marwari background my father's Correct. family when he was growing up he didn't have this he had to develop all those interests by himself and you know with no references yeah. so I think so you had the base, and then you took off from that. Had the base, you had the base. Correct, correct. So, how do you think you can use this expertise, experience, success to inspire the youth, especially the young girls in this country? You're already doing a lot with writing history for the kids, but how will you use uh, your? You, how do you think you can contribute? No, I think. I mean. of course i write books i have been visiting a lot of schools i get invited to schools and colleges and all to speak i think maybe in the last 3 4 year two years so everything was shut down covid but since i've written the book maybe maybe a hundred or schools and colleges that's a lot my it's a lot it's a lot yes so when i go and speak i talk about these things i also talk about how when i can see when i was younger so many of my decisions i was taking as a girl see the invisible constraints you know the restrictions which we have in our mind i had them i didn't even realize they were there it's only when i look back and i say that you know why why was i thinking like this it was not an external restriction it was something that was inside me so i i don't know i just share an example i was working with my father on uh, in you know we had a spinning textile unit and uh, there was a particular kind of product which i thought had a good market and we should be making it and i thought it should be done in the south the plant should be set up there next to the port so i made out a little project report and i said see this is this fantastic return on investment we can get if we set this small project up here in the south my father said sure it looks good but you know let us finish this and then i'll see if i have time to look at it we are so occupied with other things he said fine and that was that if I, if i was thinking like a like a son 
I would have said, I need this much money and let me go and set the project up. But that concept was not there ki main koi madras se aage, koi gaon mein ja ke, I'm setting up a factory at the age of 22-23. In that time, for a Marwadi girl to do something like that. But it's not that I considered that option and rejected it. It simply did yeah. not occur to me that this is something I could possibly do. That's the thing. So now I think uh, you've already come a long way and yes. you are guiding and helping people to think as a person rather than as yes. a gender. Or not which is so important. This kind of barriers. You know, exactly, exactly. It's so thing. important. And it, it it happens, it will happen, it will take time. But people, if you see it, then you may realize when something like this happens in your life. Absolutely. And I think it's important to to have those conversations because it's only then that we can make or try and make that little change. You know, like and our business that we do. So in terms of women, if you look at our factory where we produce imitation jewelry, more than 50 to 60 percent of the workforce is women and okay workforce is women in so many places but maybe more than 50 60 percent of my management and senior management is women you know my production chief my warehouse head accounts chief they're all women and Wonderful. working in an so that i think we need to also I didn't hire them because they were women. They have not reached their present post because they were women. They were just good at their job. I, my difference is I did not reject them when they applied for that job, saying how is a woman going to handle accounts and government officers and all of that? Uh, how is a woman going to handle the labor? And how is she going to handle all the inspectors? So let's not have a woman production chief. I did not reject that. I said, ho jayega, kar lenge, kya baat hai? <laughs> well done good thank you good for you that was amazing i mean really i think we need to be that change that we want you know so you've, you've taken big steps in that direction and that's huge for us thank you thank, thank you. you so much thank you malini thank you so much for inviting me on.